Hello from wherever you are, and welcome to Let's Play Games. I'm John McFarland, Adult Services Librarian for National Public Libraries, and I hope you'll join me in learning or rediscovering some of the more common and uncommon games out there. This time, we are going to go into a simplistic game of attackers, defenders, and half the deck's missing. But this is one of those games where trick-taking gets very interesting and probably has one of my favorite scoring mechanics in card games. This is Euchre. Let's get stuck in. So now that we've gone into shuffling, I need to talk about what I've removed from the deck. Uh, I went ahead and shuffled a little bit better and gotten things a little more organized for this version, but I took out the two, the three, the four, the six, the seven, and the eight. Why did I keep the five? One second, I'll explain that in a moment, but I wanna talk about what I did keep. The nine through the ace of each suit. So this is another ace high game. And what we're gonna be doing is each player is going to be getting five cards. And for those of you doing the math real quick, that doesn't add up right for a four player game. You're correct, it does not. However, that is going to be part of the fun twist of this game. Now I need to talk about these fives. So the winner of this game is the first that gets to 10 points. I'll explain scoring in a minute. But it is a lovely way of keeping track that you get these fives. So what you do is as you score points, you're going to take the cards and actually hide what your score is. So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, that's five. Then you're gonna add in six, seven, eight, nine, and then obviously 10. But with two cards, you can actually help keep score in a more open way that way. So I love this scoring mechanism because it's dynamic. You eventually see it. It's easy to keep reference to, and people will do it creatively as well, because four can be this, four can be this, three can be some combination of this, this, or even this, or even this. So it's really fun to see the way people will creatively keep score. But what we're gonna do here, let me get these a little more shuffled. Now I'll go ahead and tell you there's one thing, um, you have to have at least one jack in your hand. So if you get a hand full of tens and nines, this is called a farmer's hand, and must be immediately declared reshuffled. And there's some cards that we're not going to use. So we've got our cards off to the side here a moment, and I'm gonna deal these five cards. So one, Four, five. And I've seen people do um, a set of three all around and a set of two all around. It can vary. So let's look and see what people have. Well, there's a king here. So uh, this is where suits matter just as much. And this is another game that is fairly quick on the turnaround. Let's see, three hearts, not bad. So we're gonna just do it like that, especially since the king of hearts is one of the only things. Almost a farmer's hand, but there's the one queen. So this person is probably kind of not happy with the way they got dealt, but alas, here they are. So three clubs, not bad configuration. So now, this is where you determine the lead suit and which suit takes predominance over the other. And there's one easy way to do it. Here. 
So the first go around is dealing with, is this the Trump suit? Now what you can do is there is a, a ranking of sorts of suits and their level of importance. Let me make sure I've got it because I always goof when I do it. But you're trying to just figure out what the suit is to begin with. And I actually forgot to talk about one important part about card ranking, but I'll do that here in a moment once we've determined the trump. So the ace of diamonds is here. So the person to the left has the option to say that they want that to be it or to pass it along. So this person is passing, this person is passing, this person is passing, this person is passing. No one wants that. So you're gonna flip this over. Now you figure out what you actually want it to be. Because what'll happen is if you wanted it to be diamonds, you would actually, and player three might have wanted to do this, would be able to take this card and then discard one of their other cards. Not terrible, but considering what they have, I think they're just kind of letting the situation develop. This player is wanting hearts to be the trump and they have the option to select that at this moment because they could still pass if they didn't want anything in the dealer, um, which is termed as screw the dealer, uh, mess with the dealer is what I usually use, but alas, here we are. So let's say the player two gets to select the hearts as their trump suit, because it's a pretty good deal. So we know these cards are not gonna be used. Now there's one thing that's important here. The card ranking changes at this moment. The jack of that suit is now the highest ranking card and trump over all other cards. Not bad. And this is another game where you have to follow suit with what is played. So you're wanting to try and determine what your best hand combination is gonna be. So for here, there's one other benefit that the Trump Jack, that's same color, but of a different suit, is going to be your second highest ranking card. So we can actually beat out the other Trump suits, but only in those instances. So now here we have who goes first in this sort of game. One second. Here we are again, another card game with another complex history that's somewhere around the early 19th century. So we have Pio Mingo in 1810, which describes a, a gaming school, gaming house with all fours, Lou, cribbage, and whist. This all fours concept and the Lou concept in particular I wanna focus on because it seems to describe the basic rules of what we now know as the game of Euchre. Its next kind of development was in 1829. A game called Euchre, U-K-E-R, was played on steamboats uh, with people going up the Mississippi and into the American West. Yes, the American West will once again be playing in car development. Lots of time on the road or what would pass for a road. Lots of time to play new games. Lots of time to misremember new games. But that actually kind of plays into the development of this game in its own. What do I mean? One second. So now, the player to the left of the dealer will be going first, which is great for the person who just decided what the Trump suit was. Not bad. There's one other aspect that I'd love to go into. So notice there's only five possible tricks. 
someone is going to get a majority of tricks. Now, players will be teammates across from the other. So there is an advantage in this person discarding what they want to get rid of or playing to their advantage that way they win the trick. So this group that has won the bid, as it were, or sometimes it's called contract, which shows up in other games, they are the attackers. The people across are the defenders. So if the attackers win three to four tricks, they get one point. If the defenders win three to four tricks, they get one point. If the attackers get all five tricks, they get two points. Remember, we're only playing to 10. If the defenders get all five tricks, this is called a euchre, nice. And then they get two points for the troubles. There's one other fun element, which I think we're gonna do because it's pretty easy to show. One player can decide to go alone. The other person is out of this game, and then they are going alone against the two defenders. They've got a fairly high combination set here. They've got three of the trump. They've got the highest trump ranking suit. And remember, you have to follow suit if you are able. So it's something to roll with. Then you've got this king right here. And the point scoring stays roughly the same. but. The way this works is when you go it alone, if you get all five tricks, you get four points for your troubles rather than just the standard scoring. If the defenders get all five tricks, they get four points for their troubles. So there's a little bit of risk. So let's show this going alone concept. So these cards will not be used. And this is another one of those games that is kind of a silent based game. So let's see, they're gonna start with, might as well go ahead and throw out this club. So now this is the lead suit. It's not a trump. If you can play a club, you have to, which they do. This person has a club to play. So there's one trick now. Next card. They're gonna play a ace of hearts. This person doesn't have a heart to play. So they're gonna just get rid of a card. This person has a heart to play. They're gonna hold that jack, this uh, king of hearts because they now know that they can at least stop them from winning one. So now we're gonna go again and they'll play the jack and try and suss that king out. This person has to discard. And this person has to follow suit, so that's where the king comes into play. Not bad so far. So that's three for three. They still need to win the other two. Now they're gonna play this heart again. This person can't, so they're gonna hold in that card. This person does not have a heart to play, but they have the second highest ranking card, the Jack, which means that mm, they tried going it alone, but having that Jack was the actual saver in the end. So now here we just have one last trick. So going alone was almost worth it. Having this Jack was the only reason that it worked out. Notice that we knew that the Ace of Diamonds was out also the Ace of Spades, the Queen of Spades, and the Nine of Diamonds was out. So now here's where scoring comes into play. They won four tricks, which means they get their one point versus zero. And that is the way that they keep track. So then what are you gonna do? You're gonna get all these up and you are going to shuffle again. Pretty easy game to play, pretty standard to just rewind the process and I'll show you one more game. So that way I've illustrated both the concept of going alone as well as playing a full game. One second, let me get this set up for you.
All right. So when I talked about remembering or misremembering, there's two kind of segments I kind of want to go down. First off, the Spanish and French. They had a game called either Triomphe or the French Triomphe, which had very similar rule sets to this, as well as another similar game called Écarte, which had the very limited card set. We also had from the Alsatian region, the game of Euchre, J-U-C-K-E-R, which again, had a very short hand. German card decks have smaller hands. They don't have anything below, at most, the seven. This seems to only involve six cards per suit. So, according to Hoyle, the source book that we would kind of have as our baseline for the authority on card rolls has changed its mind over the years. The American version of Hoyle, around the time period of the late late 19th, early 20th century, says that the game originated from German settlers in Pennsylvania and specifically calls out, and I quote, a rich German farmer's daughter who misremembered the game of Eckhart, leading to these current rules. We don't have a name for this alleged rich German farmer's daughter, but the rules kind of stuck. But Euchre has one other interesting aspect that I want to get into. The Joker card. One second. So, here we have, once again, a setup. The spades, and we're going to treat over here as the dealer this time since we rotated it, which means that player three will be the first one to play. They're going to pass on spades. 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 Okay. Easier said than done, but they would have, had they accepted spades, had to take up that card. But you kind of want to wait and see if you've got something you can really go for. If you have three of the six spades, might be worth it to try, especially if you have all the high ranking ones, just to make that trump. So there is now going to be that bid. So they're going to say diamonds. They want diamonds to be trump. Cool. Job done. Let's move. So player number three is going to be first to go. Diamonds are now Trump. They have the Jack of Diamonds. And remember, the goal is to try and win fully as best as possible. So let's see. Now we've got the Jack of Hearts over here. So technically, there is a way, if you play your cards perfectly, to win all five. Let's see if they can do it. So. The biggest risk here is the ace of diamonds, which we know that player four has. So starting with, see, now you gotta make some choices. Do you want that? I would say yes. You know, draw, draw out what you can. So the 10, uh, this person knows that they can kind of get away with throwing away something because they've got a trump left. They can't follow suit. So they'll get rid of, yeah, they'll get rid of this nine right here. And this person still has to follow suit, so that's a nine. So that is one want over here. So now we've got to make some decisions. Let's see, let's, I think they're gonna rely on seeing if their partner can bring it up. They don't have anything they can play, but they can play a trump if they so wish. So that way you can at least try and make a game out of it. So they're gonna play this ace of diamonds. This is now the trump, but they've gotta try and lead if they can. This is where this jack of hearts comes into play. You can basically find a way to get yourself involved uh, this person's going to get rid of the 10, which means the second group, they're going to be able to win their second. So they only need one more to get their trump point, but we're going to see if they can try and get all five. Let's see. Um, let's see, they'll bring out that ace of spades. This person has to follow. 
this person cannot follow, uh, they're gonna go ahead. They've got the remaining trumps. So they'll get rid of this queen of hearts because they're, they don't have to worry about it since they know unless this person has something that they could not possibly have considering all the trump cards have been played, we've got cards that they can give away. So that's three. So now this person is going to play the jack, see what they can draw out, the 10. This person is gonna play the queen, knowing that this person has to follow suit. And then they'll put in the king. That'll be everybody. So in this moment, no points here, but two points to the other team. Notice how they could not have gone alone in order to win that, but playing a successful partnership leads to the back and forth of this game, which is what makes it a quick, fast paced, easy to start and fun to finish for sure. But this is Euchre. So now I need to talk about the printing of cards themselves, because this kind of plays in. Now, we're familiar with the French style deck that has four suits of 13 cards. And notice they're fairly large cards, which means they're harder to print. The earlier printing versions could not necessarily fit everything. This led to a standardized size. Well, if we had nine through ace here, that turns out to be one, that's 24 cards going on here. Then we've got these pip counters, so that brings us to 32. But for the standard size of printing, you had these blank specimen cards that turned out to be not for play. It's just we had to put something here so that way it went along proper in the deck. And eventually these would be decorated. Uh, in 1868 is the first time that we see these ornately decorated cards that were called a mystically but eventually they would take on these new names, Joker cards. Well, these Joker cards took on a life of their own and eventually started to be added to the standard deck, which is why as far as printing of cards, now we have 54 cards in total, including two Jokers that come with every deck. But the development of Euchre is what led pretty succinctly to the development of the Joker card itself which is a nice little impact that Uyghur gets to have on the development of cards at all. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to join us next time where we delve into another border card game, which we'll be crossing some bridges soon, and I'm very excited for it. Be sure to check out our YouTube page for other episodes of this series, as well as other great series, as well as find this airing on Kneecat. I'll see you next time.